G'day everyone, welcome to the final weekly general update for 2013. Uh, the next one will be in early January. And it looks like we're finally getting a uh, Christmas rally here in the Australian market. It may only be short and very brief, but uh, it looks like the fund managers may be trying to push things higher. Uh, the US market broke to new all-time highs on Friday night, so that everything looking really positive there. So let's have a look at a uh, bit of a run through and see where things are sitting to finish the uh, trading and investing year for 2013. So the S&P index uh, had a really good week um, after a, a bit of a pullback, rose 43 points on the week, and this amazing rally continues, and it's now at all-time highs. There had been a short-term triple top had set up, and it was likely that if the market couldn't break through that, that we could see an adverse reaction to the downside. But uh, Thursday night and Friday night were strong sessions, and particularly on Friday night, it uh, broke through this uh, triple top around 18.20 and actually closed above it. Now, having said all that, I think part of what's going on is that um, fund managers all around the world get paid their Christmas bonuses based on the performance of, of their um, their investment funds. And so it's in their interest to actually push up prices um, in the last uh, week or two. So it's quite likely that we may see some reversal of some of those um, some of those buying patterns in early January. So I'm still in the same position where uh, a reversion to the mean is likely in January. Now, don't get me wrong, I remain extremely positive on the American market, um, but it is, as you'll see from the chart, uh, a fair way higher than it should be. And uh, reversion to the mean is certainly something that happens constantly in financial markets. And the reward from here, even though the market is going up in the short term, is just not attractive. Uh, there's a lot more downside than there is upside in the short term. So the, I guess the other aspect too is from a fundamental point of view, American stocks are not expensive. Uh, their economy continues to improve. Uh, there's an awful lot of negative reporting about how the US market is, uh, is topping out and is about to crash. This is just wishful thinking. It is based around the thought that because things have gone up so far, then they must come back down again. And um, that is not necessarily the case. And American stocks are not expensive. So still opportunities there in uh, in America over the longer term. So let's have a look at the uh, the chart. And if we uh, if we pan back, you can see there's been a uh, a terrific run. The last time we had any kind of meaningful correction was November of 2012. There's been a few little ones, but since then in 2013 has been a very strong year, and you can see none of them actually got back to the 150-day moving average. Such is the strength of this uh, this rally. Now, we have got a bit of divergence setting up. You can see the price is forming higher highs from September through to the end of the year, continual higher highs. And you can see we had this uh, potentially short-term triple top, one, two, three, over the last uh, few weeks, but that has broken through on Friday night. But you can see that the MACD and the RSI is actually forming lower highs. So whilst the trend is still heading up, it is heading up at a slowing rate of growth. And that is the first sign that um, we're perhaps reaching a, a top and there'll be more of a, uh, a correction. So if we can get a correction to bring this down to, you know, around 1700, it would be extremely healthy for, uh, for the market. It'd be very good for markets all around the world. So really you need to sit, step back from that. Uh, the other aspect, of course, that's occurring in America is that margin debt is now uh, has risen back to worrying levels. And when you've got high, high levels of margin debt, it means that when you go into the correction, that a lot of people get shaken out of the market because of margin calls. And so I think the correction that we're next going to see is probably going to be very sharp. It's going to be uh, partly fueled by, um, by margin requirements. So that's why I really don't want to have very much exposure uh, into the, uh, particularly the Australian market when that occurs, because uh, the first day down could be uh, could be quite nasty. So definitely a time for being uh, being cashed up. But look, longer term, as I said, I'm still 
extremely positive on the American market. I still see significantly higher prices during 2014 and probably into 2015, but you certainly don't want to be buying at this point in time. Moving on to the Australian market, uh, the S&P index, um, courtesy of a really good surge the last two days, uh, rose 165 points. But look, the local economy is slowing at an alarming rate. What really concerns me is the number of stocks across all kinds of sectors. So this is not just mining services and, and resource related stocks. Um, the number of companies that have downgraded profits suddenly from nowhere in uh, you know relatively um, satisfactory outlooks in August and September, and now you roll forward two months and uh, there's, there's downgrades coming left, right and centre. So the speed and the extent that this is going through the economy is a real concern. So uh, extreme care needs to be taken in the Australian market. Now, in much the same way that we've seen some year-end fund manager buying in America, we're seeing the same thing here, I believe, start up on Thursday and Friday. I was beginning to think that it wasn't going to occur at all. But when you look at um, some of the stocks like BHP and, uh, and Commonwealth Bank, uh, not only was it a really nice price rise, but they were quite substantial increases in volume. And those increases in volume can only come from the big players really going in and buying hard, and that's the fund managers. So it's likely we'll see a bit more yet until uh, we get to the year end, but then I would be concerned that we would get a reversal of some of that uh, come early new year. So extreme care required in the Australian market. Let's just have a look at that index just for the purpose of the exercise. So you can see um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, our market didn't do very much, but then Thursday and Friday, a, a very big surge. And let's just have a look at a, at a couple of the key stocks. This is BHP. So look at BHP, the price gapped up and, uh, and closed on its highs. And look at the volume, particularly on Friday, massive volume rise going in BHP. And we'll see Commonwealth Bank, the same sort of thing. Um, huge volume spike on Friday, more than double the normal turnover. That can only be fund managers really wading into, uh, into the stock. So it's highly likely we're gonna see a bit more upside yet. So I think we might have quite a good strong finish to the year at the index level, but at an individual stock level, uh, there's a lot of stocks under pressure and and, uh, and a lot of people now are worried about who's going to be next in terms of the profit downgrades. So take real care in the Australian market. Now gold uh, dropped again, dropped by $24 on the week, so it's still under pressure. Um, and that certainly wasn't helped by the Fed deciding to do a little bit of an easing back on uh, their uh, bond buying as well. So we've formed a double bottom now at 1191. It's been tested. There's been a little bit of a bounce, but don't be surprised if we see lower prices below 1191. Uh, I don't think we've really seen a panic washout yet, and that's normally what it takes to end something as massive as a 12-year bull market in, uh, in gold. Now, my view is we've still got the longest and the strongest part of the gold cycle yet to come. So I think in uh, in two or three or four years, we could be looking at gold uh, significantly above $2,000 an ounce. It all depends on how shaky things get in the world's financial system. But um, when you've had such a massive run as we had, it takes quite a while and generally you've got to get some sort of panic washout and we really haven't had that. So I wouldn't be surprised to see um, gold price down a thousand and something uh, over the next uh, couple of months. And we're still not seeing anything positive from gold stock indices yet. So you really don't want to be moving on gold stocks or indices uh, or, or gold itself until we see something positive there. Now, copper has remained very strong um, all year. It's consistently been pointing to a global recovery and we're obviously seeing that flowing through now. So once again, Markets were right and the commentators were wrong. The people that were saying that copper would fall back to $2.50 a pound or below, well, they've all been proven wrong. And, uh, and the price of copper has been a good indicator. 
Uh, oil climbed to $99, so again, a bit of strength coming back into oil. And there's the, uh, the copper chart. So it's remained very steady since uh, the middle of the year. Let's just uh, have a quick look at, uh, at gold and gold stocks. There's the, uh, the gold price. And you can see that uh, we had three sharp days down, formed a double bottom with the lows that were formed in June when, we, when the market really, we had a bit of a, bit of a flash crash in, in the uh, price of gold. Popped back up a bit on Friday, but really no, nothing very much going on there. And if we look at the GDX index, you can see it's still basically in decline. There's a little bit of a base over the last couple of weeks. So in fact, the gold stock indices have done a little bit better in the last couple of weeks than the price of gold did, but it's by no means conclusive. We need to see this moving up above this purple line, which is the 150 day moving average. So we need to see gold stock indices trading up above that for at least a couple of weeks before I'd feel confident of, uh, of calling a bottom in gold and gold stocks. So just moving on to the overall strategic approach, um, nothing has changed from the slide from last week. The Aussie market is very vulnerable to more profit downgrades. I'm just staggered by the speed and the extent that this has gone through the Australian economy. Um, it really is quite extraordinary. So it means that uh, stocks that you, you would have previously thought were you know, sailing along really well, have been going magnificently for five years, all of a sudden they're encountering uh, terrific headwinds in terms of growing their uh, their profits. So uh, I believe you should be cashed up. I believe there's a reasonably high chance we'll see a correction in America in January. I think that correction could be very sharp because of the impact of the margin debt. Uh, so therefore you, you don't want to try and get as much out of this market as you can and then get out at the last minute because the first day down could be a nasty one. So cash up and only buy quality stocks under the best fundamental and technical circumstances. If you're not quite sure what that means, the best fundamental and technical circumstances, then I would love to be able to uh, assist you with that. I'm very happy to, uh, to talk about the way that we do things and the opportunities that uh, that provides. So if anyone would like to discuss that further, there's my email address. Uh, please get in touch with me. And uh, I look forward to um, continuing to communicate with you in 2014. Have a wonderful Christmas and we'll talk to you next year. Cheers.